Hey everyone, my name is Jimmy Zhang and I'm here to talk to you about Polymer.js today. So when I was trying to decide on what to talk to for my tech talks, um, I wanted to find something that would be of particular interest for my classmates as new web developers. And Polymer.js is a relatively new library released by Google two years ago um, that makes building simple uh, websites very fast. Um, and I'll go over the details as we go through the presentation. So um, yeah, at the top I have a definition of what Polymer is from the English Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Um, I won't repeat it to you, but the key words are um, similar and synthetic. And what that means is that um, Polymer is basically um, a framework where you define your HTML elements. Um, it tries to stay away from JavaScript as much as possible. And um, you, cr you craft these elements and then you, bond, you, know, you re repeatedly use them. So that's where um, similar and synthetic come from. Um, it, as I said, it was released by Google in mid-2015, and it's, um, it doesn't have a large user base yet, but um, I'll go, in a future slide, I'll go over why I think it'll grow pretty big in future years. So basically, um, yeah, like I said, it was a, it's a central element-centric approach to creating apps where um, everything's centered around HTML. And at the bottom, there's a quote from um, the Google website that basically says what Polymer's philosophy is. So uh, what's so special about Polymer? Um, it's a modularized, feature-driven way of handling front end. Um, it's kind of like NPM for Node, but um, this, it's, it's always been very difficult to have this for a browser side um, feature because of uh, the reasons listed here, such as uh, browser incompatibility and JavaScript versions. It's uh, very streamlined, and it's very simple to use. Um, the learning curve is a lot lower than React, I have to say. Um, you can build a similar website, such as the one we're building right now for Grace Shopper in like a fraction of the time. And um, it's, there's, it's, as it's gaining popularity, people are adding a lot of you know, um, custom elements to it, and there's a growing library that you can download off of. Um, so yeah, the internet's always been like an um, evolving entity. Um, just 10 years ago, the web didn't look nearly as nice as it does today. And um, it'll continue to do so. And Polymer really takes advantage of this reality. Um, it use, utilizes a couple things that aren't really in modern browsers yet. Um, and it uses polyfills, which I'll go over in a sec, to um, fill in further things that browser, modern browsers don't have. And um, it favors component-based design. So what that means is each, each Part of the applications is a is an independent component and um, self you know self sufficient, and here in the diagram you see you can see a example of a hotel billing application and what a um, a structure might look like. Um, so on the left here you can see a um, diagram of what the basic structure of a Polymer application. The core engine is what everything rests on top of. And the foundation in red below is basically um, the polyfills that the browser needs for Polymer to run. Um, as time goes on and as browsers get more advanced, these, this red will diminish. Um, the core is the, the base library or the base um, app, the, the engine. And um, on top of that engine, you lay out your elements and then the UI elements and then you have your application. Here um, is a basic web, perhaps a mobile app. Um, on the left, you see a, like a, the home page and then a sidebar and then a single item page on the right. And um, basically, for re if you were to build this in React, you would have to um, you know, build endless, like as we're experiencing, like endless containers and then put stuff and then um, just map states or props, et cetera. And um, it would take, you know, it, it causes quite a headache when these things become a lot more advanced. And, but with Polymer, um, you basically just lay out your HTML. Everything goes into an HTML file. And you define them um, one by one. So for instance, the sidebar would go into one. And then in the sidebar, you would import another HTML element. And then that HTML element, you can specify the features and style it in that HTML element. Um, so yeah, here is the basic structure of an app you would have um, with Polymer. Um, you would perhaps split it this way or another way. Um, there's infinite ways you could do it. And, um, but once you do create an element like in this fashion, you could use these 
elements in other apps as well. Say you created like a sidebar that you really like, um, you could have it import it immediately into another app and have it start running really quickly. And here um, is a example of a Polymer element. So here is how you would define um, how it would look and what would go in it. So um, this would be saved in an example HTML file. And the element would be called my element as shown up here. And then you would have the style information here. And then um, in the scripts, you would have the Polymer constructor where you would define what properties, what props would go, you would feed into this element so that it could display different things. And here is um, how you would import the element to your um, index.html, for instance. Um, you would import here. And it, HTML import is a relatively new feature of the web as well. Um, it's only recently in the last two years, I would say. And here you would um, lay out your element that you define um, in the body of your main HTML file. Uh, so here it's a, here's a diagram of you know, just one of the browser features that Polymer takes advantage of um, HTML imports. And it just shows you how um, browsers, most browsers nowadays um, don't really have this feature. Only Chrome really has stayed up to date. And, um, but this will change in the future. And as it does change, um, the, I think Polymer will get m much more popular as a way of building fast applications and um, simple applications. And yeah, I mean, obviously, it's, only, it's pretty young. So there are several drawbacks that I'm going to go over. Um, there's a lack of guidance. There's not much documentation. So um, React, for instance, there's many tutorials online where you can read through. And um, if you don't understand something, it, it'll walk you through doing it. There's not much of that for Polymer at the moment. Um, the error reporting is pretty miserable. Uh, like when, you're, when you get an error, it doesn't really tell you why. And um, it's not very um, intuitive to figure out. It's a lot slower than React for large applications. And this kind of ties into the last point, which is there's no server-side rendering. So in React, when you um, render a component, it renders on the server-side first, and then it pushes to the front end, and your browser displays it. But here, everything's done on the browser side. So um, every time you refresh the page, everything has to be reloaded or re-rendered again, which takes time if your application is, is super complex. But um, as I said, I think this will get better as the internet becomes more advanced and browsers become stronger. So lastly here, I have an example of an app, a website, a simple shopping website built purely with Polymer. Uh, so here you can see, um, I didn't make this, by the way, but um, yeah, this is pretty similar to what we're building right now for Grace Shopper. Um, so each of these would be a component. And then, um, yeah, like each of these. And then there's a shopping cart where, and everything is, you know, this is a relatively small website, so everything is pretty smooth. But um, the performance does get worse as the application gets larger. And here you can go to an individual item page and et cetera. Um, yeah, I think yeah, that's it. Thank you.